are taking our very first baby steps with QLab. I assume that you already went to my website at QLabTutorial.com, clicked the QLab download link and downloaded the software, have installed it into your Mac and are now ready to go. Uh, I will show you that from that point, so let's go. You're gonna go down here to the uh, QLab icon, which looks like a little glass right there. We're gonna click it and it's gonna open up with uh, Open Workspace, we don't have any workspaces yet, so let's make a new workspace by clicking New Workspace. The workspace is going to open up, and this is where, like myself a few years ago, went, what do I do with this? It doesn't look like iTunes, it doesn't look like Keynote, uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like PowerPoint. What do I do and how do I run my shows from this? Come on, let's go. So, uh, first thing I'm going to suggest you do is uh, going to go up here, make sure you're on QLab, make sure you select the window, and you're going to go to View. In View, you're going to click the Toolbox. The Toolbox is going to open up this little side window right here, which is going to give you all the tools you need to actually program the software. Uh, you're going to go back to View, and you're going to click Inspector, not Inspector, sorry, Inspector's already open in this case. You're going to click um, List, Carts, and active queues. Of course, there is hotkeys for these located right here at um, Command L. Uh, but to make it simple, we're just going to click on the link right there. Uh, the, we're going to open this up a little bit wider, like so, so that we can get a nice clean view of that workspace. Now, that is the area that just opened up right now. You have two sections queue lists and active queues. We're not going to talk about queue lists today. That's getting a little more advanced. We're going to keep this super basic. We're going to click on the active cues to open up this blank window right here. Now, like in anything, there's multiple ways to do this. So just because I'm showing it to you this way, if you find an easier way to do it, by all means, go for it. I am showing you it this way for a, a very important reason, and that is because with all the years experience I've had, I have found that this is the way that is the easiest to do uh, in a theater environment. But if you have a different way to doing it, Fine. Examples of that is if you want to do audio, you could then take this little tool and drag it in here. Okay? But guess what? It's blank. There's an X right here saying that something is wrong. Well, because if you hit, uh, if you hit go on there, nothing's going to happen. Okay? Um, you can also bring an audio file by pressing Command-1, which is Command-1. Okay? It appears just like that. Uh, once again, you notice in the target queue, in the inspector down here, remember I said you can go up here to view and there's an inspector. If you can turn that off, that disappears. We want the inspector on. So you're going to go up here to view, make sure the inspector is on. We are then going to do this. We are going to find out why there's an X there. It says double click or drag a file here. Okay? So in this case, I can go over to my desktop. And I have a little folder I created for this tutorial called QLab Files. Uh, in the files, I have some very short uh, audio tracks. So if I bring the Sky Lounge guitar into that little drag file here, it will link it right to there. Now look, at it even tells you where it's at. It's in my home folder, my desktop, my QLab files, in my tracks, and there is the Sky Lounge wah guitar. Okay? Now, that was about three steps to do that. Trust me, I'm going to show you how to do it a lot faster. So we're going to go Command Delete on my keyboard to get rid of that track. Okay, We're going to start from scratch. I'm going to go to my desktop or wherever you have your track, and I'm going to grab it and drag it right into the workspace. Done. Everything connects automatically. You do not need to go here and add an audio track and then connect the audio track, all that kind of stuff. That is a waste of time. You do not need to do that. Um, it is kind of cool to know because if you have an audio track programmed with a specific fade cue and a specific volume cue and you want to re-change the edit of that song or change, let's say it's a voiceover and you want to make a new voiceover for this particular venue, you could just drag and drop the new track in that same location and all your settings would remain the same. So that's why that option is there, but for just simply dragging a song into it, you don't need to do all extra work. Just grab the song, drop it in your workspace, done. Now for those of you that are coming from iTunes um, or something like that, QLab is not iTunes, which is thank goodness for that. But um, it's going to be confusing at first. For example, we're going to highlight the song, the track, 
track number one. We're gonna go up here and we're gonna hit the go button, okay? Track played just fine. And if you notice, with the active cue window open here that I have on the right hand side, you can see the track. Um, by clicking go, watch over here. Now I can pause that track, and then now I can grab this bar and drag where I want it, which is brilliant for situations when you need to actually um, just rehearse the last part of the song, or you want to fast forward to an end of a song. You could then pause it, fast forward it to the last uh, 20 seconds, in this case the second and uh, th th 0.35 milliseconds, hit play again, takes off from there. Now here's where the huge difference is between iTunes and other music players compared to um, Quick um, QLab. We are going to drag in a second track, okay? Drag in a second track right underneath there. Now here's where this is where people get confused. In iTunes, you press play, song plays, the song finishes, plays the next song, right? Not in QLab. You're thinking, why? Why make it so complicated? Trust me, this will make your life so much easier when you realize you have total control. You don't want tracks to play continuously through unless you tell them to. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's say you wanna play a song right here. In this case, it's just a short four second intro for this demonstration. You're gonna hit the space bar or the go button. In this case, I'm gonna hit the space bar. Three, two, one. Okay. Song's about to finish, next song starts. No, it doesn't, okay? And it doesn't because you might want to do something like this. Hit this track. We're going to hit go again. Who'd want to play two songs at once? Nobody. Not true. There's a lot of cases where you're going to want to do uh, a background effect, a sound effect, an audio intro, a voiceover, anything like that, and it can be done all at once. Uh, let's just say in this case, we don't want to do that. We want to learn how to program pre-show music for when the audience is walking in the theater and we want the songs to play next, 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 next. So let's say you want to actually uh, just make a, a little um, folder for all different tracks to play for 30 minutes or up to an hour uh, of music for your pre-show as people come into your theater or your venue. Let's get into that right now. So, next video starts right now. <laughs> 